Hi, my name is Richard Dezerga from Microsoft, and today Microsoft launched a brand new permission for the Office 365 APIs. They launched the ability for us to leverage search from one of our applications. So before we get into the specifics there, let's take a look at an Office 365 app and how we would traditionally add a permission to um, our Office 365 app. So I'm here, and this is just a simple MVC app. I'll right click it. I can say add new connected service. And this will bring up a wizard that will allow us to select all the different permissions that we can connect to in the Office 365 service. So there's things like calendar, contacts, mail, my files, which is OneDrive for business. We have sites. And then we can even go to the Azure AD graph to look up users and groups. Uh, now, you don't see search here. If I were to go into the details of sites, it's all really high level, like working with site collections. And so uh, because this was just now launched, it's not yet visible in the tooling in Visual Studio. It'll get there eventually, but for now, we can still configure that permission for our app by going into um, the Azure management portal. So I'm gonna go ahead and cancel out of this. I've already registered an app, and that's really what this does is when we do this add connected service uh, wizard, it's gonna go and create an application for us in Azure Active Directory. So if I were to bring up Azure AD, I have lots and lots of apps. So I'm just gonna to go to the last page here. And here we can see my O365 search app. And so when I go in here and I go to configure, um, we'll see all of the defaults that I use to configure this application when I configured it in Visual Studio. So it already looked at what I was gonna use for debugging. So you can see it's localhost and it has a port number. And if you go down here at the bottom, you can see the app permissions that I specified. Now, um, I can do all this manually. Visual Studio makes it really easy. So I would still do most of your work within Visual Studio, but until the tooling catches up, uh, what I can do is come over here, and now I have this new ability to select um, run file search queries as the user. So this is gonna be our SharePoint search that we can go and perform uh, that we're going to use for our application. Now, one of the reasons this is, in my opinion, such a big step forward for these APIs is that there's so much that rides on search within Office 365. You know, things like being able to do discovery type of things, e-discovery. The Office graph is powered behind the scenes largely through search, and that's gonna make all of that over time more available to your applications. Today, we're going to use the search capability to just get a list of all the site collections I have permission to view. And that's actually something that sounds easy, but it was challenging until today to be able to perform with these APIs. So let's take a look at how we're going to do that. Now, just like the add connected services wizard hasn't necessarily caught up with that change that's in Azure yet, um, so too have the, the SDK itself. So the SDK, in addition to doing some of the strongly typed things with the discovery service and working with um, Azure Active Directory to authenticate, it has some great capability for me to work with certain things in SharePoint strongly typed. So I can work with files um, and be able to you know, work with those um, as an object instead of necessarily getting just uh, JSON data back. Uh, search will probably eventually get there. Today, it's not. So we're going to actually just do a normal um, search a rest call via search. So I, I created in my my MVC model here a get search results that takes a query string. And ultimately what we're going to do is go out and, and I'll just zoom in here a little bit, we're going to get an access token. So you can see that here I'm getting an access token. And then ultimately what we're going to do with that access token is we're going to add it to the header of our um, get request. So when we go out and do a get of our um, using the, the REST APIs, we need to make sure we include that token in our header. And this is actually a misconception a lot of people have of the Office 365 APIs. Um, they don't necessarily realize that those same tokens can also be used for just general REST queries, and they certainly can. I don't have to do the strongly typed portion of the SDK if you're more familiar and more comfortable with REST. Um, once I do that, I'm going to go and perform uh, my query. And, and so my query is being built right here. Um, I want to highlight a couple of things that are unique. 
One is, is that when I use the Office 365 um, APIs, I need to get a resource specific token. So I just can't use any access token. I need to use one that's specific for the resource I'm trying to access. And in this case, I'm going to use um, a resource. Most, most of the time you're gonna get your resources from the discovery service. There's a, a new resource that's going to show up now called root site. So if, you, if I zoom in here, you'll see kind of some traditional code here where I'm getting my discovery service. And then I'm getting a specific um, resource out of the discovery service called root site. So you may have seen things like my files in the past, or you know maybe some of the different exchange type of, of things like calendar and contacts. Um, in this case, we're going to use root site. So this will return the resource that uh, maps to the root site of your SharePoint Online tenant, uh, not the tenant dash my. This is just the normal root site within SharePoint Online. And then, and then we're ultimately going to return the access token for that. The other thing that we're going to do is as we build our search string that we're going to call into REST, we're going to use the service URI in the endpoint URI. Um, so that's going to be, again, it's going to be that root site that we're going to tack our query onto in order to uh, perform this query. And then finally, we're just going to go and process through all the results and output those into our view model. So let's go ahead and, and run this. Um, I'm actually doing two queries here. The first one gets all of the site collections. And the second one, I thought this would be kind of fun to do, gets all of the modern groups that SharePoint has. So, you know, a new capability um, that, you know, gives us the ability to, um, you know, do modern groups. We can certainly go and query those as well. Uh, the only difference in these two queries, uh, I'm doing a query that says content class is STS site. So that's basically saying bring me back site collections. And in my modern groups one, I'm tacking on that I want a web template that's equal to groups. So if I zoom in here, you can see that. So that's my query. And again, the only difference between the two is for modern groups, I'm gonna specify the, the template that's being used, the site template that we're using um, on it. So let's go ahead and, and I'll run this and check it out. So when this launches, it's going to uh, take me to my starting page. At this point, I haven't logged in. So if you look up at the top, it's gonna to say log in or register. And what we're gonna do is I'm just gonna click on my sites or my modern groups link. And so if I click on sites, that's gonna walk me through that authentication process. So I'll go ahead and log in as one of my test accounts. And now that it's going back, you can see here, it's, I just put a quick breakpoint. We have our discovery information back. Um, so if I wanted to go look at all the information on the discovery service, but what I wanna do is I wanna get a specific resource out of the discovery service. So I'll go ahead and, and um, go over this. It'll take one second for it to get those results back. There we go, and now if I were to look at this, what you'll see is for that, um, the root site, you can see for my tenant, um, is rzna.sharepoint.com. It's not rzna-my. That's true. That's what we would traditionally get back with things like the um, my files. Um, and you can see that um, it's bringing both of those back here for us. So we'll go ahead and, and I'll press play again. And now we're at the point where we're going to add that token to the header. So you can see I have my token here and then we're going to build our request string. And if I were to go and just copy this here really quickly and put it in my immediate window, um, you can see that it's building a just a traditional search query. So if you've, if you've ever worked with um, our REST APIs for search, this will be very uh, familiar. There's really n nothing unique about what we're doing with that. All right, we'll go ahead and press play. And now our page should load and we should see all the site collections that we have access to. Now again, this seems like a simple task, but this was something that's traditionally been hard in the past with the Office 365 API. So the search permission scope makes this a lot easier. So you can see I have all my different site collections here that I have access to, and I have quite a few. Um, again, if I click on Modern Groups, it's gonna go through that same process again. Um, it's gonna get the details on that root site. It's gonna go then and um, 
do my rest call to get my items and you can see I have three modern groups. In fact, just to kind of prove that out here, if I go to Office 365 um, into Outlook, you can see it'll have my, there's my three modern groups, the social experts, mobile um, developers, and project keystroke. And again, that corresponds directly to the three that have come back in our little Office 365 app. So this was a really just simple MVC app that uh, performed search queries using the Office 365 APIs, but there's lots of things we can start doing with this. We can do site pickers. We can even start delving into uh, some of the Office Graph type things, pardon the pun. So check it out. Uh, for now, again, you're gonna have to go into Azure AD to finish the configuration to add that permission. Uh, but you know, again, over time, we'll, we're gonna add more things there and you're gonna be able to do it directly through the tooling. So thanks for watching and happy coding.